Welcome back, horror family. Shudder has recently released an exclusive movie called Sun. Directed by Ivan Kavanaugh, starring Emil Hirsch and Andy Matichak, it is a visceral film that does not cease its blood-curdling assaults, which begins from the start of the movie and continues all the way through to the end. Honestly, I know this will be a heavily controversial statement to some, but in my opinion, it is far superior to its similar predecessor, Hereditary. We witness a young woman attempt to reconstruct a semblance of a normal life after possibly escaping from a cult. The movie constantly pushes the audience to question if what we are seeing is real or in the head of someone attempting to reconcile post-traumatic stress with psychotic episodes. What is revealed at the end is something much more sinister. Now warning. If you have not seen the film, please stop watching this and go check it out because I will be spoiling some aspects of the movie, if not all. What is exposed at the finale is that the woman was a part of a cult. She was the only member to successfully raise a demon entity to procreate with resulting in a child, a young boy who the majority of the story focuses around. We discover the name of the demonic patriarch is Polistus during a ritualistic chant performed by Laura, or Anna as she was called prior going into hiding. During this occult speech, Anna mentions the name Astaroth. In the hierarchy of hell, there are seven rulers. According to the Laterne of Light from 1409, written by a proto-Protestant Christian sect, each ruler represents a variation of the seven deadly sins. Lucifer represents pride, Mammon represents greed, Asmodeus represents lust, Leviathan envy, Beelzebub gluttony, Satan wrath, and Belphegor sloth. Under these rulers, there are various sovereigns below them. Peter Binsfield in 1589 expanded upon the Laterne of Light in his Treaties of Confessions by Evildoers and Witches, where Binsfield discusses various houses. Astaroth was said to be a Prince of Thrones, who tempts inquisitors and fraudulent accusers. There are also ministers of office under Astaroth, Kamos, Grand Chamblain, and Knight of the Fly. I theorize that Polistus, which is actually a species of spider, is another name for the minister of hell, Kamos. According to the demonic hierarchy of Charles Burbage, Kamos serves in hell's royal household. In Burbage's early 19th century work, Le Farfade, which in English translates to the imp, Kamos is listed as the Lord High Chamberlain. Occultist A.E. White presents Kamos in the same capacity in his treatment of the Grand Guamoir in his book of Black Magic and Pax. Kamos is almost certainly a variation of Chemosh, an ancient Moabite god named in the Bible. In the Bible, Chemosh is variously known as the Destroyer, the Subduer, and the Abomination of Moab. According to biblical account, Moab and Ammon were born to Lot and Lot's elder and younger daughters in the aftermath of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible refers to both the Moabites and Ammonites as Lot's sons, born of incest with his daughters. Kamos, or Polistes, was possibly a demon born from this incestual blasphemy, a curse pressed upon the Moabites for past sins. The cult led by Anna's father could be a hidden group of descendants from the Moabites who over time worshipped their demonic overseer, attempting to raise an antichrist in spite of God turning their back on them. Anna was the only member of the cult to entice Kamos, thus their consummation of David, who according to occult literature is actually a cambion. A cambion is a creature born from the union of a demon and a human. The word cambion is related to the Greek word for change, and probably a cognate with changeling, which we see occurs to David throughout the film, where his body goes through transmorphic properties with hematoma of the stomach followed by explosive blood expulsion and large abrasions all over his body. We discover only through the consumption of flesh that David's strange illness is cured and the transformation accelerated. One thing I found interesting is that the child is named David. In one of the Bible's most well-known stories, David slays the Goliath, then goes on the run as a fugitive and arrives as a newly anointed king conquering Jerusalem. Perhaps this young David is hell's savior, king on earth, and in the decades to follow he may be on the run with his new protector Paul after the death of his mother, only to come back as a man or demonic entity, conquering over Jerusalem and bringing upon the end of days. 
Whatever David and his father Polistes are according to the hierarchy of hell, we can be assured the flesh-eating spawn from a godforsaken consortium between a mortal woman and one of hell's knights will not stop at eating random pimps and caring neighbors. To quote William Blake, The vision of Christ that thou dost see is my vision's greatest enemy. Thy heaven doors are my hell gates. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little trip down Hell's rabbit hole. Did you see Sun? What did you think of the dynamic relationship between mother and child in the movie? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Stay scared. <laughs>